Welcome everybody and thank you very much for joining us for our online Lyceum. My name is Chloe Dees and I am the conductor for this Lyceum today, hosted by Edinburgh Association of Spiritualists and in conjunction with our sister church in Canada, Open Door Sanctuary. Our Lyceum is a safe space and place for spiritualists and people of all faiths and ages to share their opinions on spirituality. All opinions expressed are intended to be shared in a non-judgmental way with a view to stimulating discussion and greater understanding of our spiritual awareness. So the focus today is on a question of mediumship. And our speakers are John Blackwood, who's an officiant of the Spiritualist National Union, ministers Janet Parker, Simon James, and Brian Robertson. So thank you very much to you all for coming along this evening. Now, I have this feeling that there's a joke, three ministers and an officiant somewhere in there, but I'll just leave that one with you to sit and think about. But to start our service, I'm going to invite Brian to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Chloe. Let us all gather in the, the communion as we see it with the God of our own understanding. Let us just take for a moment, that thought of that creator and bring it into our being. And as we do so, on the very breath of life that gives us life within this physical existence. And on the breath that is the breath of the creator, may it be that I be the voice of the intention of this day, that we come together in community and in community that we are open within mind and thought to be challenged, to awaken to the beauty within, to that inner connection that allows us to be connected to you, the creator. And in that gratitude and in the very gratitude that as we welcome you the most high into this community, this conversation, may it be one of heart, one of healing, one of thought and one of action, that it create the very action that allows the expression of the nature of the spirit that you have created, which we express through us. And may it be with our thought and our knowing of that which is the pathway we have chosen that we continue on in that expression that allows us to that point of light within, that point of connection with you, the most high, that point of connection with all things that is nature itself as we perceive it to be. And in that very emanation of creation, may we truly be as intended to be in our way, the healers, in the understanding of what we do, how we serve, and how we choose to be. And in this celebration of gathering this day, may we truly recognize the presence of the nature of the spirit that you've allowed to manifest within us, around us, and through us. We ask this in your name. Amen. Today's Lyceum topic is a question of mediumship. A hundred years ago in July 1920, there was an anonymous quotation looking at the purpose of mediumship, which was printed in the Two Worlds magazine. He with spirit power can see the real through the apparent. The stars are always shining and we have only to make a condition to see them on the brightest day. It's a very beautiful quotation. 100 years later, in July 2020, on a Zoom Q&A of all things, the medium Gordon Smith had this to say about the purpose of mediumship. Its purpose is to prove that there's life after death, a continuation of our soul, after physical death, 
But equally important is that the medium's message jumpstart the life of the recipient who's so overwhelmed by their grief, it's almost like they're dying. The message gets them back on track, back to living in this life. Expansion and growth is the way of the spirit. If you as a medium can take away people's fear of death, then you take away people's fear of life. So I'm going to hand over to our first speaker for the evening, John Blackwood. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see most of you back again who joined us for, shall we say, part one of our Lyceum session last month. Uh, and that was very much about the purpose of spiritualism and what role spiritualism plays in a modern society. And we thought we would extend that conversation this evening uh, to look at mediumship and what role does it play. Uh, and very much it's an open topic about a question of mediumship. So anything you want to ask about mediumship, its purpose, its future, its destiny, uh, then that's all open for discussion and we'd love to hear from you. We, of course, I think it's important to mention, have limited the Lyceum session to 100 people this evening because we think it's the only way we can stimulate discussion is by limiting numbers. So uh, sorry to obviously those people who couldn't join us this evening. A Lyceum, as Chloe has mentioned, is an opportunity for us, albeit in a visual way rather than face to face, to be able to come together and share our thoughts without fear of contradiction or indeed discrimination either. So I think maybe some of us speaking tonight might be a little bit controversial, uh, but that's what the Lyceum is all about. That's how we learn and that's how we are able to share our thoughts in an open, non-judgmental way. But importantly, I think we as spiritualists need to feel we have a voice and certainly as Lyceumists, that's very important for us. My journey in spiritualism started as a Lyceumist within the Spiritualist Lyceum, and that was about learning about all of spirituality, other religions, and actually life as a young person. That's really, really important, and it was a fundamental part of my education in growing up. And from that, I learned about spiritualism, and of course now, today, I call that my religion. So when it comes to mediumship, I, I think I take a, sometimes a, a controversial view on mediumship from time to time because I do question its purpose in today's society and actually within our churches, our spiritualist churches today. What is its role? Uh, is it maybe time that we actually moved on from the medium on our platform? Maybe that's something uh, you have views on this evening certainly something that I'm keen to discuss. During the period of lockdown that many of us have experienced, and we here in Scotland are still going through that at the moment, uh, it takes time for us to, I guess, question what we do, what we think, and how we practice our faith. And coming together in a virtual way is certainly a, a new revelation for many of us. When it comes to mediumship, uh, I think it's important to think about what the past has taught us and what perhaps the future holds for mediumship within spiritualism. It's interesting when I've been thinking about the subject and, and looking at various passages and books that I have, something I feel sad about is that we are having very similar conversations about the future of spiritualism and mediumship as to what people did a hundred years ago. And that makes me sad in thinking that have we not progressed in that hundred years? I would like to think that we have, but maybe from reading the teachings of the past, they, we haven't progressed very far. Okay, Doc, we seem to have lost John there. He's temporarily vanished into the, the internet into the ether, into Zoom. So whilst John tries to get himself back, could we move on to Simon, please? Yes, of course. <clears throat> Thank you, Simon. Um, well, I will uh, say, first of all, good evening, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good day, wherever you are. And um, it's uh, a pleasure to 
uh, be part of this lyceum um, with Edinburgh Association and uh, in conjunction with the Open Door, these two communities coming together and all of you from around the world, which is wonderful. And so I would like to carry on um, with uh, John's uh, controversy, if possible, and um, really encourage you to think about this, this idea of mediumship and on one level, the obsession with mediumship. And so let's just, um, I'd like to play devil's advocate or in spiritualism, um, fifth principle advocate and um, just get us to look at exactly what mediumship is. Personally, um, if we look at the idea that mediumship ultimately uh, encourages somebody to live and to embrace what life is about, then fantastic. Um, but if that is all we are, um, then we're in big trouble. And at the moment, I personally think um, spiritualism um, is in very, very big trouble. Mediumship is in rude health uh, around the world in, in some respects, um, because obviously there's a thousand mediums on every street corner. You can have a meal and a medium. You can have a medium and a meal. Um, in some cases, you might just best to have the meal and leave the medium um, wherever you are. But... If we look at what mediumship is supposed to be about, then we have to also examine in an adult fashion when it begins, the purpose, and then when it stops. So ultimately, mediumship is there to provide a glimpse of the divine to mort mortals, if you will in um, the work that Brian myself did in, in the book Magician to Mystic, we created and mentioned and described a phrase that, if you will, the phenomena of mediumship is the way in which we perceive the divine. That's what the phenomena is for. But when we begin to worship the phenomena and more dangerously, I believe, begin to worship the channel through which the phenomena express itself, which you see today, then we are in grave danger of missing the point completely. Because ultimately mediumship is to touch an individual to say, this life where you are, maybe in difficulty, maybe great troubles, but there is the divine that is there constantly moving you, encouraging you and taking you forward. And if you are grief stricken and that you feel as if that your heart is broken through the possibility of perceiving what is so-called the spirit world, um, then it may ultimately encourage that individual to move through their life and see that there is something more to the nuts and bolts of existence. And if we do that, fantastic. But do we do that? In some cases, I believe we do it very well. In some cases, I believe we create addiction. You only have to look at many of our centers and places around the world where the same people come to the same meetings to get a message, to get a message and a message and another one and another one and another one. Is that really psychologically helpful to the individual? Is that really and giving that person the strength and the freedom to take to make a choice to live their life or are we giving them spiritual band-aids where we never let them free of that addiction now of course i'm not saying that this is done with any purposeful or ill intent but what i'm getting us to examine here is that is this a positive way forward uh if mediumship in the 21st century or are we creating a toxic situation where we have people that only come to a gathering for the hope of getting a message? And I'm sure all of you will agree that there are many people that come to our centers just in the hope of getting a message. And what I'm putting out there as a question is, is that healthy, both for the recipient and the center that is propagating that? Because if that's all we are doing, then we really need to stop and rethink. If we are encouraging the individual to go, 
I cannot imagine what you're going through at the moment, but let me give you a vision of maybe and what your strength and purpose is to come, then wonderful. But if all mediumship is, is today a, a constant band-aid to other people or a psychological impulse for the medium to make themselves feel good in public or a path to a career and a possibility of travel overseas, then no, mediumship is not fit for purpose in the 21st century. Brian? I think uh, one of the things that we all have to continually ask is why, why as mediums are we doing this? And, and that question hopefully provokes that desire of integrity and honesty to the point of, Am I doing it because I need healing? Am I doing it because I need attention? Am I doing it because I have little worth within myself? I think these type of questions when it comes to mediumship and the medium are very, very important. Not the most popular questions. Uh, and many of you who have uh, been with the four of us before in some, uh, uh, way or another, we have a similar uh, drumbeat here. And I have said, and I said last, last month, if we had a curtain in front of every platform, how many people would actually take up the art and the practice of mediumship if they were never seen, if they never saw the audience, if they never got the feedback except for a yes or a no? Those type of things, uh, I think, uh, are there to provoke the thought of why we are doing what we are doing. And, and at the end of the day, it is a tool of healing. And at the end of the day, the purpose of mediumship is not necessarily for ourselves, but for the service of humanity in, in how we have been trained um, traditionally. And in that tradition, it is recognizing that we are here to take the sting of death away, whether it be through grief or whether it be that empowerment of, of uh, easing the fe mental fear of, of death or death coming, that it empowers the individual to live, that it takes the darkness of death away and points them to the light of living, loving, and learning. And that's what mediumship, it, the tool of mediumship can do. As, uh, as most of you, again, who have been with us, uh, and, and we often, you've heard us mention everyday mediumship before, and all of us on the panel here have our own way of seeking to empower those within their talents. And that that movement of the spirit, that movement of, of, of one's soul speaking to move not only themselves out of the depths, maybe it may be a biology of, that creates depression or a perception uh, that has been enhanced by life's experience, whatever it is, to move them towards the light of living, which is the light of the creator. And in the light of the creator, life continues. And once we know that, why do we need another message? How many messages do you need to know that there is life after death? And what does that do for you in the encouragement to live life to its fullest? So why, uh, there is a phenomena that's happened recently on Facebook where there is a ton of individuals giving messages. And, uh, and as was mentioned, does it become an addiction? And, and is that an addiction actually empowering people to live, empowering people to trust themselves to live, trust themselves to make choices and take responsibility for the outcome of thought, word, and deed? Or are we enabling a codependency, a codependency that does not allow people to live, to love, to learn, to make choices? You know, the wonderful thing about life is the stumbling and falling from it. We, we become more aware through our pain than we do through our joy 
uh, most times. And it is only when we ignore the pain that we are going through that we don't take the awareness that it is offering us. And it often offers us that journey back to that nature of the spirit, the power of the spirit of who we are. And that's what mediumship, I believe, is about. It has become irrelevant uh, and, and non-functional if a medium is just giving messages to be a Band-Aid to an individual and, and a dependency so they don't make choices. That's not what the ancients, let, let go of spiritualism for a moment. If you look at that, the whole history of esotericism, alchemy, the, the real science, all those things in the past, which brought us to this point today, you will see that it was an empowering tool. There are signposts within the history of that. And so its relevance is mute if we do not get back to that empowerment that a medium can offer uh, within the faculty of the spirit to ease the wound of grief, to awaken that, that there, the sting of death is not there and the easement of the fear of life diminishes. Then it will still have purpose. Then it has meaning then it allows people to be released from the shackles of the fear of making a decision for themselves, an action for themselves, and a movement for themselves. That's the power of mediumship, you see. And I'll leave that to you, Janet. Well, I think it's all about healing. And at the end of the day, I'm bringing comfort and Bringing healing is what this world needs. But if we go back oh, more than 100 years, when, when the, the spiritualist churches came about, then we had the Federation, then the Union, and all of those churches came around because of this new revelation, apparently, that the dead speak, that life was continuous. And... There, there were lots and lots of churches and they were so well attended because it was a new, it was a revelation at that particular time. And never was it more needed. And the churches were full when it came to the great wars, the two wars. And even in, in Glasgow here where, where I am, the, the big church in St. Vincent Street it used to have 2,000 people every service and two services on a Sunday. That was the fervor. That was the interest. That's what people wanted. This was after the war in the 40s and the 50s. But then we started with the colleges. We started with the summer schools, the American you know, they had their summer schools and the people attending seemed to want different things. In the early days of the Arthur Finley College, it was to hear all about the teachings of the spirit, the love of the spirit and what the spirit could tell us, but not always to do with the survival issues and the, the private messages. What the spirit came for was a message for us all in those teachings. But then the circles that people had sat in for years, they would sat to develop one medium. It seemed that the circles were developing as many people that were in the circle. And so it was adding momentum. It was um, being all this feeding of let's all be medium. And so we had television, we had press, we had media, and mediums were springing up like the lilies in the field. And so everybody was able to see it. People now, they can, they can find these spiritual channels. They can see it. And I believe that 
it's been done to death, if you'll excuse that expression. Because I don't think that we have that much to prove anymore, other than we have proved that there is an existence after this change. It's just one life, but it's a change. And after this existence should be interesting, but not half as interesting as what goes before this change called death. Everything has, everything has changed and it's taken on a different, um, a different feeling. And, and I know that um, Simon mentioned the word unhealthy. Yes, unhealthy for those who get addicted. But I actually think that it takes on an unhealthiness from even some of those who are mediums or purporting their mediumship or whether they want to be called clairvoyant, psychic, whatever. Because it, we've lost the essence. Where is the healing in all of this? Because for me, the bringing of comfort and the healing, and I'll put my, um, you know, my, my cards on the table, and I will say that in our services, our divine services, and all services should be divine, I believe that there is no need for mediumship of that nature within our services. We should be having mediumship with healing, mediumship with the teachings of the spirit, mediumship with gathering together and singing in harmony and being as one, and worship. Yes, there is still a place for mediumship in the one-to-ones and perhaps you know there still be a need for churches to survive with their clairvoyant services as they call them although they should be mediumship services but when i look at my religion everything is about mediumship but not about the communication from the spirit world to say that, yes, your mother's all right. Sorry, there we are. Um, I'm sure, is Mr. Blackwood back with us? I think so. Can you hear me okay? I yeah. can. I'm going That's to. That's fine. My apologies. My internet went down halfway through my spiel. I don't know if the spirit world had anything to do with that, but I'll, <laughs> I'll blame the internet anyway. Yeah. So maybe that's more realistic. Uh, before we move to the discussion, and actually I think that this follows rather aptly after what Janet's just been saying too, I was going to read you uh, a couple of passages from a book that you might be interested in, in looking up, and some of you might have it anyway. It's called The Higher Spiritualism, The Higher Spiritualism, and it is available online, and it was written by John Leonard, and it was mm. reprinted uh, back in 2010, but it was written in 1927. So going back to, as I said earlier, 100 years ago. The first thing it talks about uh, is, or John within this particular section, is the meaning of spiritualism. And it says that the meaning of spiritualism is a purpose, giving a purpose to life, and shows that our life's purpose is not confined to this earth, but that we simply start our life here and continue it with the benefits and knowledge we have gained in a superior state of existence. Now, he develops that thought to say that, remember, we as spiritualists believe that life is eternal, and this is a learning ground, and we take what we learn here to the next world. But there's also this concept, of course, in the spirit world, there are many people there of great intelligence who are trying to influence our world here. And he talks about mediumship serving a purpose, as the other speakers have mentioned, about giving consolation and support to those who are grieving. But he said that is not the purpose of mediumship. It's much, much more than that. Whilst that has its place, it's about teaching us to develop ourselves to become 
better people. And another couple of quotes just developing that thought. He says, the purpose of mediumship is for the mind to develop its powers so that it can consciously contact the spirit world and thus consciously acquire its knowledge in response to its mental demands. And then it introduces something quite controversial. We know in traditional mediumship, we go into that power of spirit to be able to sit and learn to develop our mediumship for the spirit world to come and communicate with us and give us their evidence that they're still living and they're still living. But he says, actually, we should be doing the opposite. We should be developing our minds to consciously inquire and help develop our minds as well as our spiritual abilities. And he says here, it is man who ought to go to the spirits by developing in himself his spiritual faculties. And finally, just as a, another thought here, he talks about mediumship of the future. Remember, this is 100 years ago. Sadly, I don't think we're here yet. Maybe it might take another 100 years. But he says, finally, the mediumship of the future, we may believe, will be of the purely voluntary and conscious nature without any suppression or subordination of the personality of the medium, but rather with an expansion of the personality and a development of the active powers of the mind. So he talks about mediumship as you and I know it today as being passive. It's about sitting there waiting for spirit to come to us and give us messages. He says, really, we should be doing the opposite, going to spirit. So being active in our mediumship, expanding our minds so that consciously, not just in the state of mediumship, but in the state of our everyday lives, we are allowing that power of spirit to influence us through inspiration, as he later talks about, or just being part of our lives. And I think maybe that's relevant today in the thought of coronavirus. And, and I can only think that we have all these scientists throughout the world who are all trying to find a cure and find a vaccine. And actually, there's all those like minds in the spirit world, those scientists and medics who are there, who I'm sure have an influence to bear. I'm sure that they can help influence those scientific minds here in this world. So surely true mediumship should be for us as mankind, extending our minds to those in spirit, asking them to influence us in great ways for the betterment of mankind, but actually also even just in our individual daily lives to give us that strength, even sometimes just to get from one day to the next. Anyway. There's another thought for you. And now it's very much open to you. Thanks. Thank you very much to all of our speakers. Well, where to start? You've got lots of lo lots to think about here. Um, lots of controversial statements as well. So the first thing that's come into the chat for everybody is from Christine. And she says that it's hard to disagree with much of what has been said. But what do the speakers think that we could do about it, please? Well, personally, I think it's our voices that can make a difference. I think it, it, it's, it's voices in action and recognizing if you feel that, that, uh, uh, that your pursuit of your spirit and, and the understanding of, of the tradition is one that you hold to heart, it's, I, I always feel very strongly that all of us need to ask ourselves, what are I willing to do? How am I willing to participate? Can I give voice to this? Do I participate in, in, uh, in expanding that, that belief that I personally have? Because the wonderful thing about uh, the tradition, uh, I believe, is that we all have, uh, and are encouraged to have our own voice and our own action. And so if we can, if, if there's a group of us that actually feel that, you know, let's, let's speak about these things of concern uh, and that are in my heart and let's have conversation and from con conversation to action, 
I think is very, very important for all of us in whatever we do, uh, whether it be the environment, whether it be within uh, uh, spiritualist groups, whether it be uh, to do with uh, other aspects of spirituality, how we look at it, that we are action oriented with it. Just to maybe add on to that, uh, I think it's a very interesting point there from Christine. I think we need to lead by example. And if we think a lot of us are actively involved in our own local churches, and it's our churches that need to be the places of learning and where we take some of these ideas forward. As I mentioned earlier, for me, that was a lyceum. That's how I learned about my spiritual progress and hopefully destiny too, and led me into becoming a spiritualist. But nowadays, that's, I guess, the role of the spiritualist church. So I think we need to move beyond that mindset. And I think we have to teach, whether it's within study groups or awareness groups, which are abound within our churches now anyway, we need to say, OK, what's the practical application of mediumship in your life? So it's about moving the conversation on and using it as an educational tool uh, what I was quoting from within that book, uh, John Leonard very much says that this is all about expanding our minds and our knowledge base. So I think we really need to, to capture that thought and think how can we become more spiritually aware and use the influence of spirit to become better people here in this world. I, 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 I just got to say, I agree with John. It's a leading by example as well. I, I mean, like at the open door, there's only one message. There's only one message. And, and our place um, used to, before COVID-19, used to be full. We, we got, basically, it was balanced with healing, mediumistic inspiration uh, from those who, who uh, developed that, and then the, the uh, contact with a loved one. There was only one message. And that's leadership that is toning down and balancing it and saying we're going to stick with this and from sticking with this they will come and they came and i think i think uh, what he's what john's mentioning there for all of you who belong to different churches are you willing to lead by example balancing out uh, healing mediumship and bringing it into the fore into the service into and uh, uh, recognizing that those who are actually being inspired within the, the uh, voice, the spirit within, and that inspiration to uh, allow that uh, conversation to happen. And, and, and in that, we have an opportunity of leading by example. I, I think that's really, really important. And I really, I, I have to say that, and I'm going to shut up and let everybody talk, but I, I really think this is the, what you just mentioned, John, it's really important to address on the level of commu community committees, et cetera, and those who are responsible within their churches to say, we're going to do this and, and allow that balance of the spirit not to be heavy in, in, in just one thing, a thing called the demonstration. Can I just pick up on that as well? I guess so. Sure. Stimulate further discussion is you think about our churches, it's very, very important to have that message. And I don't decry that. I think that's still got uh, maybe in a slightly different way, but it's still got a place within our movement. Uh, but what happens when you get your evidence? Lots of people come into our church seeking evidence. Lots of people come in seeking evidence. They get it. And then they say, they've said to me, well, I've got the message. Actually, what else have you got to offer me? And the exactly. answer is nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to be focusing on. So maybe some of you guys have, have ideas about how we can actually do that in a practical way. Thank you, John. I believe Janet would like to say something. Yes. Um, one of the things that um, I think so many people, when they come into the churches, not only are they grieving, but they're, they're lost. Um, and um, there are so many insecurities around. And, you know, when we, we look at people, there are so many other strengths within people. Why can't we look at people and say, my goodness, 
you know, um, y y your, your strength is how good you are with people. Your strength um, is how good you are in a practical or even artistic way or whatever. And it, it's not about just helping the spirit world, the people in the spirit world um, come back. It's about us helping the people here and giving them, um, you know, some kind of teachings where they can find their strength, but to go on and try and help themselves so that they, they aren't all wanting to be mediums, but they're wanting to be just really good people and to be of service in the way that is right for them because everybody, everybody has their own way of helping. And we need to encourage that. We really, really do. And so, uh, you know, it's not all about the spirit world. It's about the spirit of people. And we can do that through the power of the spirit. But um, anyway, there, there I, I get on my soapbox again, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Janet. There's a few questions coming in through the Zoom chat, but before I pick them up, um, I'm going to invite, I hope I get this name right, Jasmine to come into the chat room. Hi, Jasmine. Hello. Um, I'm going to try to explain what I want to tell because my English, it's not my first language. So I have to do a little bit harder, my, be my best a little bit harder. What I want to say is, for example, I'm, I'm from Belgium. I don't have um, a church in Belgium. So I have to follow everything online. And um, I, I totally agree on the, on the philosophy part because that's what I'm trying to do in Belgium as well. But I do feel that if we do a message and like, like Janet said, it's about healing, but it's also, um, I believe that it's not only in the one-to-one -one sittings because there are also people's, people who are scared to come in for one-to-one -one reading, people who want to, to look when, when they're together with everyone and, and it's more safe in some way. And um, what I sometimes feel, and, I, and again, I'm totally, I totally agree on the philosophy, but what I sometimes feel is that we, we want to re I know we want to reach more people with this philosophy, but our religion is about healing. And if we, for me, if we can't heal that one person, then I sometimes think, why are we doing it? Because it's, it starts with one and it's rippling and we, we can get more people into our centers and, and um, let people hear our philosophy, let people hear when we talk about spiritualism, when we when we we just come come together and, and connect with each other, and just be as one for one minute and get people to know what spirit is about, what everyone is about, and I totally agree on the fact that it it brings it, it makes you a better person if you if, um, it doesn't make you that it's your responsibility, but I want to say. Um, I got a lot of, I, I understood mediumship a lot more when I started to know the religion more. So I think we as mediums, we have, an, we have a duty to educate people, but also a duty on how we can heal people because spirit is healing for me. So that's what I wanted to share. I hope everyone could understand it and I hope I explain it correctly. No, um, you did, thank you. Thank you very much, Jasmine. I'm going to go back to the, the group chat. There's quite a few things coming up. So Nancy has said that she agrees with the panel and what they've said, that many of the centres and churches who are in need of financial support turn to mediumship classes and demonstrations. Um, and we go to demonstrations to support those mediums in the church, but we really ought to be looking towards the philosophy and the healing. So we'll come to the next question, which is, from Eleanor. She's asking, do we feel that there's a lack of spiritualists who speak out loudly to bring the knowledge of spiritualism to a wider audience? John mentioned education. Um, I feel that we need a push to bring the knowledge into mainstream education. Does any of the panel have a, anything they'd well, like to I say? Had the, I had the privilege of being a, a vice chair of education for the SNU. And when I was there, uh, uh, 
our mandate, uh, well, the chair, and uh, who was Jackie Wright at the time's mandate, was to improve the education and the importance of bringing it up to the 21st century. And the challenge of, of bringing it to a level of the 21st century, because we're, we're, we still have a lot of old concepts that are not um, totally integrated with the understanding of the, uh, of the mind, uh, neuroplasty, neuroscience, psychology, all those things, human behavior, technology, all those type of things that affect the condition of uh, the human condition. We see uh, in the 21st century an increase of mental health challenges um, due to the influx of information that is not just biology. You, there is a biological point, but we know that, that the information highway, as that has increased, it has also aggravated mental health challenges. Um, and why I mention this is because there are a lot of things that we forget uh, within, within the aspect of what people call mediumship, we're dealing with the mind. And we're dealing with uh, how mediumship works. And there's quite a few uh, studies on this about dissociative behavior. So there's a dissociation that happens. That's what, how you get your information as a mediumship. You dissociate. And that dissociation behavior actually can go greater and uh, to an extent of mental health. And we need to come into the 21st century with knowledge of how the brain functions, how, where psychology is today, the studies of dissociation disorder within mediums, that there have been studies around the world about this. And, and we need to have that at the table as spiritualists and in our centers, so we're keeping people safe. And I, that's a soapbox for me because uh, we, we, we know uh, uh, that the increase of mental health challenges, it's not just a thing that we're talking about. There's an increase of aggravation on, on mental health at the moment. And those who have a biological disposition towards that due to their chemistry, um, uh, this is all an aggravation. So we, we have a responsibility of who we are training in mediumship, who, how we are educating spiritually and all those things. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Brian. Eleanor, I hope that answered your, your question there. And to pick up on the um, topic of um, depression, someone has made a comment, sorry, I've just lost it, but they were talking about um, having a history of depression and how the pandemic has obviously made life very difficult for, for, for many people. And I think it would be wonderful that, that spiritualism can be an active um, part of supporting people in, in that. So I'm working may, may my way I, through. I, sorry, could I, come in, could I come in quickly on that or and to uh, some of the questions there? Um, uh, I think it was, was it, is that Rob put um, about, well, what are the things we can be doing in our centres? Well, one of the things is just following on from Brian briefly, much of our education that is out there is absolutely puerile um, as regards the teaching of mediumship, um, regarding spirit is doing this, spirit is doing that, you know, and I'm probably going to offend maybe 75 people on this, on this uh, group now. Um, so, hi. Um, but the, the, some of the education that's still out there is spirit is doing this to me, spirit is doing that to me. Um, spirit is, is making me do this and we hear it from the platform spirit is doing this spirit ain't doing anything and we've got to stop we've got to change our language from spirit is doing something to a person to what is your spirit doing for you and the knowledge of the spirit and the knowledge through mediumship is empowering you because we have created this really very very um dangerous and also problematic dynamic um, with power from the platform to to weakness in the in the audience. So the spirit has all of the answers. The individual uh, doesn't have any. And that that power balance, that power dynamic is really, really not good and also doesn't actually justify and describe what mediumship is all about. 
So if you will, in our centers, we should be addressing um, the, the problem of depression where basically um, one out of two people in modern society at some point will experience depression. Um, and our center should be able to do that instead of saying to them, well, I've got, a, I've got your mother here, it'll be better in 12 months. Or worst case scenario, I think you need to sit in a development circle, which is basically like finding a gas leak with a lighted match. <laughs> you know, we have got to stop dragging people off the street and putting them into circles and trying to turn them into mediums. We don't need any more mediums. We don't need any more mediums at all. What we do need is individuals that the spirit can ultimately unfold into the medium that they need to be rather than rather than taking broken people and instead of helping them to encourage them to put themselves if you will into a more coherent psychological whole um, putting them through some half-baked training program um, that just encourages them to be broken again and in so doing encouraging other people so we really need to our centers to be places of healing where people who are going through particular challenges and difficulties can meet people, one, that have had the, the, the proper training to, to deal uh, in the, with these matters, and to be places of comfort um, for the grieving, where we can actually have um, places where we can have grieving circles, where we can actually talk about the actual elements of grief and not just, oh, don't stop grieving. I've got that person you love here. We've got to stop that. And um, we've got to encourage positive grieving We've got to encourage a positive attitude for answers to the environmental challenges that we have at the moment. We have a thousand and one things we can be doing within our centers that are mediumistic driven in the purest sense, but are outside the narrow band of, oh, by the way, I've got your spirit guide here who is much more intelligent than you are because you're, you're not clever enough to make your own decisions. So here's, here he is with all of the answers. That is something that we need to adjust and need to look at. We have the potential through mediumship to encourage people to stand on their own two feet, to empower them and to actually have centers where we can bring about this. And I'm not saying anything new. This was said over 100 years ago. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, the chat is hotting up. But before I go to the chat, um, I'm going to go back through to the um to Rasheen, and I'm going to ask Rasheen to come into the room. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting <laughs> to get called. Um, thanks. Yeah, look, and I think um, the point I was going to make and the question I was going to pose, I think Simon's just answered a fair bit of it. But um, I'll just, I was just um, going back to what Janet was talking about around, um, I guess, how the, the entire sort of mass marketing approach of developing mediums sort of came about in that pathway it was really interesting to hear that timeline in action and I think um, you know it's really important it was a really important point certainly um, to reflect upon and I suppose today um, and with what Simon has just um, described in terms of you know we don't need any more me mediums so how do as educators um, and as role models then do um, you propose that, I guess, in terms of people coming through your door or anybody's door who is a teacher, how you then, I guess, in work with the individual, you know, not to necessarily say you're not a medium or you're, you know, you shouldn't or you, you are, tell them, you know, what their path is necessarily, but how do you help them to uncover and discover that um, their, their, their purpose and their, their true nature and, and their alignment um, themselves because it seems that the doors are open um, so how do you how do you filter that um, in, in, in broad spread education um, I, I would say it's really making people feel um, at ease and and welcome because um, when you talk about people coming in with depression when you talk about people coming in with other issues, be it anger issues or, or whatever, um, I, I think we have to recognize that we are not, and well, certainly I'm not a trained psychologist, but we ourselves 
as educators of train, uh, and trainers, it, it is up to us to try and educate ourselves as far as we can, but to recognize that every single person, you know, it's the, the, the beautiful spirit and the soul of that person can be reached through us. But we're not there to um, to create demigods around them, or to um, to be to create demigods of ourselves. We are there just to be a facilitator, to encourage them to be able to sit with themselves, to sit with themselves, and feel at ease with themselves, instead of feeling this anxiousness or angst or anger or torment or whatever it is you know we we have a responsibility and and if people can learn to just move into their own energy their own we say even the power because for me the power is the power of the divine but we are part of that and as we move into that, you know, there, there's just a, um, a feeling of just being at one and at peace and, and just being able to, for a while, experience the essence of what truly is there and not the expression that is going on around them, you know, it's it's very, very difficult. There is no set answer to this one because problems are different, people are different. And it's just, I suppose it's finding, them finding somewhere that they feel safe. To go into our centers, our churches and feel safe, but to feel heard, to feel recognized and then just if we can facilitate it within the teachings that we do give of stillness and also that this spirit that is within each of us it has no hierarchy because we're all equal we are all equal and you know, once we can get people to just even touch that, just just touch it, because it can make a difference. Because they might not know, you know, kind of really who they are and what they are there for. But if they can feel something that has made them feel like they've never felt before, then surely we we are doing a good job or we are at service i haven't got the answer um i can just give you this small opinion i think the problem we have in society today or one of the problems is that people don't feel that they have power nor do they feel that they have a purpose mm -hmm. and often when they come into our church and they hear the medium speak from the platform they feel that person's all powerful they're all knowing and they want to aspire to be them. And hence, that's why there sometimes is a rush to get on the platform. And I think actually our message is partly that, that we want to empower them, that we want to give them a voice. But actually, really what we're saying is, do you know what? We are all spirit. We're all spirit here and now in this world, as much as we are in the next world. And often people come into our churches and centers feeling low, feeling that they, there's no point in them continuing in their physical life. And actually, we need to be encouraging these people to see that actually that spirit within is worthy of you investigating and investing in to become more known within your spiritual reality, but also how that can empower you to become a better and hopefully more useful person that you recognize and is also of use within your family and friendship circles too. So, and that's, if we take that fully on board, it gets back to some of the ideas that Simon and Brian were talking about, about our role within our community. 
you know, and if we believe that we are all equal in the eyes of God and spirit is ageless, it's sexless, uh, then essentially what we're saying is we all have a role to play and the future of our world is in all of our hands. Now, mediumship has an important role to teach us how to do that, not just see it, but actually how to achieve that and how we have a responsibility to each other. I think that's that's a greater message. Thank you very much, John. I'm going to work through these questions as quickly as I can. There's one in the chat bar I'd like to pick up. Miriam has asked the question, if we're already actively promoting the action, that action through what we do, but so many so-called mediums are not and are continuing to give communication through demonstration, where does that leave us if we are to remain non-judgmental? How do we affect change if we believe different things? Well, I, I think we just quickly, first of all, what's judgmental? I think we uh, there's not a, a person on the face of this earth who doesn't have an, an opinion of something and, and an opinion is a judgment. So uh, which, which is created by a perception. So what we need to do is get back to the eye of perception and the eye of perception is is recognizing that you create your own right and wrong, you create your own good and bad. And what is value to you? If the value to you is to serve, then I think it's really, really important at this point in time to say that, especially with the incredible knowledge that spiritualism has, the philosophy, the, the deep rooted knowledge that was started and created is to offer that and, and um, because otherwise we just constantly judge and criticize what other people are doing. And I think it's time for all of us to get to work really and lead and lead and say, okay, let's, what have we got to offer and, and open the doors and see who comes through the door, you know, um, because I think, uh, I, I think these conversations are wonderful, uh, uh, but I do feel that our actions need to come up to the conversation. I really do feel that that's very, very important. And, and so uh, as long as we have an opinion over something uh, due to our own perception, it'll be a judgment. So once we go, well, that is unhealthy, I feel that that is unhealthy, that form of mediumship. The next question I would encourage all of us, including myself, to do is what am I willing to be an example of? What am I willing to be an example of? And how am I going to uh, be an example uh, as I learn to empower myself in the beauty of God, to uh, empower others to be the, the beauty of God? And I think that's really, really something that our tradition can offer because it's already there it, and all it asks us and is to move it forward and and allow ourselves to come out of our rigidity of mind and to and to accent the positive as they say and by asking those questions what can i do okay i see that as an observation i feel that that's unhealthy what am i going to do about it how can i promote a healthy way janet uh, just uh, uh, Janet, you know, she at, at the hall and working with her, we've known her for years and, and, and you've got John there who's passionate about the spirit and, and community and Janet would teach, uh, was really one of the people who always kept the thread of loving spirituality in the teaching of her mediumship at the hall. You know, she always kept that present even within the mechanics and i i do feel and what happens is people come and they want to learn about mediumship and they throw away that that weave of of, of spirituality and purpose and meaning and let me get to the practice without uh, but what she's what she often offered even in in her mind mapping was an understanding of self which was an understanding of god and i really do think we need to get back to that as a as community and and the latest surveys in Canada anyone who's associated with community through COVID-19 is surviving uh, or surviving if you like the word 
their mental health challenges uh, more than other people who are not in community. And that includes people who actually have family members that they get to interact with. So the studies are showing that they are handling the COVID crisis more because they are connected to community. And I think that's another thing that was brought up earlier. So I just need to mention that. And we, we have, you've got the Edinburgh Association and, and some of you who are blessed, who are with us today have communities. So how can we create healthy action to keep those communities strong? Because it's never about us. It's never about us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, I'm going to invite Jenny in to ask a question. I was just going to say something about healing um, and carry on what Janet was saying um, about us all having our own little diamond to give to the world and our own special part of spirit that just shines through that people go, yes, I you know, I can click and I can see what it is that you're trying to connect with the spirit in me and the spirit in the other person, um, that divine in each other, and that feeling of being safe. I mean, I've seen that so many times in our healing. It's just wonderful to watch people come into their own and I always seem to remind people that uh, it's taken them ages to get where they are now and uh, to heal will take time as well and I think that is something that we always have to remember and to be kind to one another I think that's one of my favorite sayings Thank you, Jenny. Um, um, I've just noticed our president, so this is um, Yvonne Craig, our president of Edinburgh Association of Spiritualists. Uh, I was just going to say that when we come into the, the churches that it's, it's about welcoming people, it's about being um, there for one another, and to me, spiritualism is about being spiritual, and uh, no matter whether we're mediums or not, everybody plays a part in that in the church. And I think it's uh, it's really important that we bring about that um, feeling that people are welcome uh, in our services and that we can help them. And they come in, everybody comes in with a, a feeling, or most people come in because they are in need of something, whether it be healing or anything. Uh, but I always feel that what they really need is so that we can give them that upliftment and that um, feeling that they are precious and that they have something to give everyone. We all have that light within us and it's up to us within each church, within uh, each member of the congregation to allow people to be able to speak and to be there to listen to them, to let them unburden themselves and just in that, everything that we do, every element of uh, what we do in our churches and, and as mediums is about healing. And I agree totally with uh, everything that Janet has said and, and indeed um, Simon and Brian and John as well. But I do think that we have a place, that there is still a place for, for us as, as members of a church. And it's helping people to see that light in themselves, to know that they are of value in this world and that they all have something precious that they can give to the world. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for sharing your thoughts there. I'm just busy looking through all of these questions. It's wonderful to see so many people um, responding. Um, one thing that I noticed Marie said that um, I feel that personal development should be taught alongside mediumship as the two go hand in hand, as has been mentioned this evening, not as separate, and that perhaps classes are too focused on the mechanics of mediumship and take the heart and love out of the purpose of mediumship, um, which is a, a valid point to make as well. And 
Karen has said that I think that we need to be encouraging people to connect with their own divinity, um, the divinity within instead of always being without, which is also which has been mentioned by Simon today. I'm just working my way gently through all these messages. Okay, um, um, just quickly, just to, well, uh, the, I think one of the points as well we, would be very good is if we could actually strip the specialness away from the word medium. Yeah. Um, take that away. Um, because if we can actually say, start promoting that mediumship is nothing special. I always say, and I don't want to take too much time up here. Who do you want to get um, shipwrecked with on a desert island? A boat builder or a medium? It's a boat builder every time. That's who you want. You want somebody to get on the boat to get you away from there because the medium's going to be useless. And why I'm saying that is because we have created this devotional, which has now become celebrity status of mediumship, which is so damaging to mediumship. And so how can we even criticize somebody who comes in from either seeing something in a demonstration in a public hall or somewhere, and then we are promoting the celebrity as in as seen on TV or in the old days, international medium, which in the UK meant that you'd go to the Isle of Wight or possibly the Isle of Man. Um, and it was something special. And so the medium was special. The medium is not special. The, what is coming through the medium is special, not the medium. We need to get back to worshipping what is coming through the channel not the channel and until we start doing that we are not going to be able to turn around our centers which have such inertia in them which worship mediums in many cases and so when people come in who as john said feel depowered um, um they come in i also because I'm, I'm frightened of life i do not have the power then i need some of that power that this wonderful a person has who has this paranormal ability to talk to dead people and it gives them such a great power over everybody else and it means that's special and if i don't feel special i want some of that specialness what we need to be getting back to is encouraging what spiritualism set out to do is that everybody is special because they are of the spirit they are of the spirit and if we can get back to that and strip away the so-called specialness of mediumship we may then start to build a grassroots movement where everybody is equal and everyone has a voice and we can stop asking people when they come into a spiritualist center and what do you do? Well, actually what I do is I breathe because I'm a human being. It's not what I do for the spirit. It's what I, what I am. That's what spiritualism and that's what mediumship is there to promote is that everyone is of the spirit. But until we take away that, um, we are we are still going to be out of, the, of this discuss, of these discussions and um, the problems that we see today. Thank yeah. you very much, Perfect. Simon. I I think we're running out of time, so this may be the last question of the evening. But Lucy has asked; she's just wondering that if we take away the medium out of the spiritualist church, what do we have left that's different from other religions and churches? philosophy for living an empowerment to say that that you are a spark of god and it's a powerful living and there is a, a vast world to love and to share your loving and our philosophy says that um we we have a lot to offer and what we are lacking is if I'm so bold, is leadership, uh, knowledge, education at the moment, all those type of things. Uh, we, we've gotten fear-based where we've relied heavily on getting people into a development circle and, and developing a so-called ability versus developing themselves. And so we have a philosophy for living and loving, and it's powerful because it seeks a thread of truth in all things with the willingness to let go of, of that which is not true, which is difficult, which is very difficult. Everyone here, including myself, certain things I don't want to let go of, right? You know, 
So, so we've got that, a philosophy for living. Can I just say, Chloe, you know, I said at the last level about spiritualism is that we're an and diverse religion. Uh, so we are that inclusive and diverse religion. We've got a very special message to give to the world. And we can empower individuals who come into our church to say that whether you're black, white, male, female, gay, straight, you have a place here within, within our movement and your spirit is of equal value. Now, what other religion actually says that? And if we harness that and get that message out, I think we've got a powerful message there to give, give the world. I think so. I think we should show that we embrace life that we embrace life. And perhaps that way it will be an example or rub off whatever you want to say. Um, and we can embrace life because there is only one life. And, and if we embrace that life and also start to be very, very honest with people, because when you have leaders, whether it be of um, centers, churches, whether you have leaders of um, district councils, whether you have leaders of the union, we start to be very, very honest as well. And people moan very much about, you know, um, the not being good mediumship. Well, why don't they say, we don't feel your mediumship is up to par. And we're very sorry about this. You make a fantastic speaker. You're welcome anytime. You see, the churches are afraid to do that. And I'll have to say, some of them don't know any better anyway. So forgive me, um, but there we are. It's true. Thank you very much. Um, there's lots of questions coming in and many people are thanking everyone here for, for sharing their thoughts. I'm just going to ask, is there anything else that any of the speakers would like to say before we wrap up for this evening? I've got them all quiet. <laughs> a great pause. Well, I think this is a debate and a discussion that could clearly go on all night. And it's been wonderful to hear such honest and passionate discussion. So thank you very much to everybody, especially to, to you, the audience, for, for coming here, for participating and for sharing your thoughts so, so beautifully with us all. And thank you so much to our speakers tonight, to John Blackwood, to Simon James, to Brian Robertson and to Janet Parker. It has been an absolute pleasure this evening to host this Lyceum. And I hope that you all agree that the value of discussing these issues is, is absolutely important and allows us to, to grow within our understanding of self and where our religion may be headed for the future. So it's um, been a wonderful discussion tonight and thank you very much. And I would like to close this evening in prayer. So can I invite Janet, please, to do that? As we embrace that great power that lies within us, that lies without us, and speaks through us. Let us give thanks. Thanks for the life that we have. Thanks for the abilities. And thanks for this evening. For the voice is so very, very important. Whether it express in the ways of love or honesty, but also in gratitude. And so we each express our gratitude for being community together this night, for stimulating and inspiring each other, and all through God's name which is love. Amen.